Shamai and welcome to Bitcoin Corporate, the show in which I have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the other markets which may be affecting it. The price of Bitcoin is at $7,920. It's at a high of $8,000 and a low of $7,860 and it's just pretty much steady and there's not been much of a percentage move. Um, so yeah, those prices continue to consolidate after that whale action which happened a couple of days ago. Uh, we're butting up against that $8,000 resistance zone which historically has always been, if I can zoom out far enough and I think I can, um, which historically has has, has been a, um, a quite an important um, uh, support level around eight thousand dollars here. So as long as we can break through eight thousand dollars, hit eight thousand three hundred, eight thousand four hundred dollars, then we should be absolutely fine. It does look as if we're in this nice um, ascending scallop, uh, or if we zoom in a little bit further, maybe even a cup and handle, um, which would give us plenty of momentum for the upside. Uh, but it's just a question of 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 waiting and letting the letting the markets sort of break through that resistance. Um, if we sort of etch up, you know, just manually now and look at the trajectory of this upside, then it would appear like we've hit the bottom of the the um, of the trend. So uh, I would I, th I think that a pump up is probably imminent, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Uh, but I may be completely wrong. So you know, Bitcoin can always go down to nothing, obviously. Um, and the the high point of level of one thousand five hundred is very possible uh, if we have a bit of fud and yeah, whatever. Um, okay, so the calm before the storm, BTC price analysis. Yeah, it does feel like the calm before the storm. Something something's mega is going to happen soon. So yeah, hold hold tight. Um, crypto markets are at Binance coin hype to mysterious tweet BS fee still surging. So yeah, BS fees on the rise, which means absolutely nothing because it's um, uh, a completely fiddled coin. Um, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Gash, Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. Will the real Bitcoin please stand up? So, yeah, so this seems to be the, the sort of news at the moment is uh, uh, you know, there may be some diversification in portfolios from people who really just don't understand Bitcoin, haven't been here for the, the, the shit show, which is Bitcoin SV. Um, and haven't sort of tracked its its its, its inception and, and and all that sort of stuff and how ridiculous uh, um, its founder is. So so yeah so I mean yeah whatever I mean I'm not going to cover its price no matter what but um, uh, yeah. Uh, so Ethereum, Ethereum, where's Ethereum? Ethereum's at $256, had a high of $261, a low of uh, $254. It's up one percent. Um, it's clearly broken free from that dead cat bounce uh, parabolic bubble pattern thing. Um, and now seems to be going on, uh, doing what Bitcoin's doing, consolidating, obviously doing what Bitcoin's doing because it's riding off the tail coat of Bitcoin. Um, so, yep, so that's pretty sideways as well. Litecoin, sideways, um, again, hitting, you know, the lower part of that resistance, which it, and that channel it seems to have, have, have built over the past couple of days, over the past couple of months, sorry. Uh, Litecoin's at $91.5, had a high of 92.3 and a low of 90.2. Um, and it's up 0.67%. Uh, so we really are the calm before the storm. It'd be ex exciting times ahead. So you know, let's look forward to what happens today or tomorrow. Um, uh, a random ETF uh, 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 approval from the SEC would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, so where are we? Monero is at $88.6. It's had a high of $90.1 and a low of $88.6. Um, and Monero again, it's flat. It's you know, it's mirroring Monero, uh, Ethereum. It's mirroring Litecoin, and they're all riding off the tail coat of Bitcoin. And whether they go up or down is heavily dependent on what Bitcoin does in the next couple of days. Gold, what's gold doing? So gold really is hitting the bottom of that resistance zone, which um, I'm sure the gold books are terrified it's going to break down into. Uh, the dollar has been on the rise uh, amongst all this trade talk nonsense with uh, between the US and China. So it seems as if a lot of people are hedging the market with the US dollar um, and they're not using gold as a hedge, which, you know, the gold people don't like because that's one of gold's main functions in the market. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if there was some positive news from, news from trade talks, then gold could easily break down through this resistance zone. If there's some negative news from the trade talks, it looks as if gold is just going to pretty much stay sideways. So, yeah. Um, the S&P 500, S&P 500, well, that looks like a symmetrical triangle to me going on right there, um, which is bearish because we're, we're already going down. Uh, so the S&P 500 looks like, you know, on a technical level, it looks like it's going to go down. But um, I suppose it all depends on these trade talks and what goes on with these trade talks. Bitcoin land, what's happening in Bitcoin land? Uh, don't invest recklessly, of course. Um, what else have we got? A good reminder, so there's a little video here, some student made, whether you asked a bunch of student, other you know young people whether they want a dollar, 
you know, immediately or whether they, he wants, they want a, a Bitcoin, you'll give him a Bitcoin. And most of them opt for the dollar because they don't understand what Bitcoin is. Um, and I'd say that that's, that's uh, we, we kind of overestimate young people's understanding of Bitcoin. Um, but there's, there's still plenty of room for um, uh, people to, to learn about Bitcoin, what Bitcoin is, and then buy some Bitcoin. Um, so, yeah, so clearly young people don't, I mean, don't, you know, don't yet know the, the, the value or, or what Bitcoin is. Um, I'm sure they will if we have another crazy bull run because it'll be in all the newspapers. Pizza guy needs some love. So just some um, props to Pizza Dude for, you know, uh, making the first Bitcoin transaction, being instrumental in Bitcoin's adoption in the early days. Uh, hodlers off last resort insane. So someone complaining about hodlers buying up Bitcoin as the price goes down as opposed to dumping it, um, which I don't think is insane. But I can kind of, yeah, I can kind of maybe see where it's coming from. Magical crypto money cost stitch is pretty cool. Someone's made that. Uh, Craig Wright filed a copyright for the registration of the Bitcoin white paper. Um, yep, yeah, that's. I mean, I, again, I think that that may have some. There's a move from the, the the Bitcoin SV people to try and pump the price up and um, uh, and try and try and um, pump up the um, the exposure of Bitcoin SV. Uh, so there's some publicity stunts like him filing this registration for the copyright, but it, he's just basically paid fifty dollars and filled out a form. So you know anyone can do that. I think someone even did in 2016. So I don't think it means much. Uh, and then obviously there's a whole load of uh, hatred and anger towards towards. Um, uh, uh, Craig Wright, uh, fake Toshi. So that's quite funny. Uh, I watched the, um, yesterday I watched the, the Safer Dean, uh, well, the Peter Schiff versus Tone Vase and Safer Dean debate. Um, now Tone Vase was supposed to be just mediating the debate, but you know, this picture speaks louder than words. It was very much um, those two ganging up on Peter Schiff. Actually, despite the amount of sort of Bitcoin bro love uh, Tone and Safer Dean were getting, I actually quite liked what Peter Schiff was saying. And I think he has some very good points. And I think they failed to find, uh, you know, what us Hegelians would call a synthesis in the argument because they were um, too busy um, fighting the, the, their particular point. So um, obviously the Austrian school uh, and that side of the, the economical debate on, on, on Bitcoin, they say that Bitcoin has value because we say it's got value. And that's fair. That's their, you know, that's, that's their opinion. That's great. Now, the Bitcoin bugs, people like Peter Schiff, they think gold's got value because it's got a whole range of commodity uses. It's useful in all the dentistry and computation and all this sort of stuff in computers. Um, and it's built these commodity uses over many years. So it's got a really stable bedrock, which helps make it a store of value. Uh, and then we say, well, no, Bitcoin's, you know, got a store of value because we say it's got value um, and it will always keep its, 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 its value just because we say it's got value. And I think the, 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 the failure in this debate was them fighting that point, which, you know, a lot of people don't agree upon um, for store of value. Uh, I think we could have found some middle ground if we just said that, I mean, I think most Bitcoiners will agree that having this international um, truth ledger, the first digitally scarce asset which has ever existed and the most digitally scarce asset now, backed up by um, uh, a very power hungry um, computer network and secured by this very power hungry computer network and the, the largest um, uh, supercomputer on the planet. Uh, I think we can we, we, we can agree that it's probably got some commodity uses uh, which are being explored currently and they will continue to be explored and it's an incredibly useful tool for many other things just than than just money. And I think a lot of the price speculation a lot of our passion for Bitcoin is in that understanding that we understand that it's got this utility and this underlying value um, and these commodity uses. And I think that when we're challenging gold bugs or trying to convert gold bugs, it would be more helpful to to uh, um, approach them from that angle as opposed to saying that, no, it's just got value because we say it's got value. So there. Um, uh, so. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it, was a, it was an interesting debate. It's worth a watch, um, uh, but it's, it's important to listen to someone the other side. So, you know. The idea, so this is sort of Hegelian dialectics that you have a thesis, which would be um, uh, that, uh, you know, Bitcoin has value because we say it's got value. And then you have the antithesis, which is, you know, um, Peter Schiff's claim that you know, Bitcoin gold has value because it has commodity uses. Bitcoin hasn't got value because it hasn't got commodity uses. And then the synthesis would be oh, actually Bitcoin has got commodity uses and that's why it's probably got value. So that's the, the underlying truth we can we can find from those two 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 opposing points. Um, so and then, you know, then we reach agreement, then we move forward. So and maybe even someone like Peter Schiff will think, oh, OK, well, that kind of makes sense. I'll, I'll buy some Bitcoin. You know? 
Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, so when converting gold bugs, please, you know, don't be afraid to preach that Bitcoin's commodity uses, even if you think, even if you just believe something has value because you say it has value. Um, so ran over. <laughs> Uh, so here's a, a funny article from CoinGeek. So CoinGeek are obviously owned by Calvin Air and um, is a complete rag, uh, propaganda rag, because uh, obviously Calvin Air is uh, Calvin, uh, uh, Craig Wright's uh, right-hand man. And uh, he's saying, you know, Bitcoin creator Craig Gas Wright's Koshi Nakamoto, which is a lie and um, proved not, not to be true, granted US copyright registrations for Bitcoin white paper and code. Um, so not granted US copyright registrations. So, well, I mean, he, he registered for the copyright, i.e. he paid $50 and filled out a form. Um, but, you know, you can't copyright open source, free and open source code. Uh, if you could, then, you know, everyone would be out copywriting Linux as we speak now. So it's, it's, it's completely ridiculous. And it, it, it also, it's, it's a publicity stunt. It's an N-chain uh, Bitcoin SV a publicity stunt to try and pu push the price up of Bitcoin SV. Um, uh, there's a lot of, you know, obviously new money coming into Bitcoin and they want a slice of that pie. Uh, so if they can try and get some of these publicity stunts out there and ex increase the exposure of Bitcoin SV, they can they can take a little bit of that liquidity. Uh, but I actually think that it's probably them just trying to fiddle the price upward as well. So, so yeah, so the, 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 the shit show continues amazingly. Um, what's cool is psychopaths like this in the past would have taken control of Bitcoin. Um, just as they take control of, of free markets and you end up with monopolies and they take control of governments and you end up with dictators. Um, the wonderful thing about Bitcoin is that the psychopaths can't, can't take control. Uh, so we're able to move forward. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Firefox Quantum offers anti-crypto jacking feature. So uh, originally Firefox was going to update its browser so um, it would just automatically block crypto jacking. But... There's actually some, you know, legit uses for crypto jacking where you, you can free up if you go on a website saying rather than deliver adverts to you, they can you can um, uh, uh, agree for them using some of your computer's resources for mining a cryptocurrency. Um, obviously, often this is done without your agreement and that's the crypto jacking side. So rather than uh, make it an automatic block, Firefox have released a plugin where you can toggle on and off uh, whether to block crypto jacking. Um, even though I think on a, uh, it also goes on to say that on a, a you know personal computer level that crypto jacking is less frequent. It's more um, uh, big companies networks which are being um, targeted for crypto jacking. So interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, Bitcoin price explained how a single trader crashed the cryptocurrency market. So the Independent is an important paper in Britain. In the UK, and of course, it's kind of got a bearish outlook on, on Bitcoin, always has. Um, and then it's a little article here saying how the the the, um, the price was manipulated by a trader, which is, you know, by one single trader, which has, you know, happened in the past in traditional markets. Um, so it's, it goes on to explain how on Bitstamp, someone put in a, a buy order, a, sorry, a, a sold $40 million worth of Bitcoin. Um, and then that, that dumped the price down a thousand bucks. But then, then then we went back up. So that that's... Uh, there's not much of a story really there. Um, I like it when these things happen. I mean, some people think it's price manipulation, but it's, I, I believe it's just early adopters just ditching coins because they, they want to take some profits because the price has gone up and, um, you know, he wants to he wants to take some profits. And then that means that those coins end up in the hands of more people, which is a good thing. Um, study. Uh, Bitcoin derivative exchange register record trading volumes. So this is the story that the cryptocurrency research firm Dyer um, has done a study on um, contracts on the CME, on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And um, the last couple of months, they've um, made all-time highs. So there's there's definitely more institutional money coming into Bitcoin. Um, and then as well as that, BitMEX have, have also said that they've, they've seen a lot more institutional interest from big um, uh, big investment firms, big companies. Uh, so yeah, it very much feels like we're we're laying the groundwork for um, an ETF. We're laying the groundwork for that Wall Street on ramping, um, where and that that will be the next probably the next Bitcoin push upward. And then we have got the halving as well. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's going to be the perfect storm of FOMO, I'm sure. Um, so there we are. That's it for today. Um, have a, an excellent Wednesday, and I shall see you tomorrow.